In this video, I'm gonna show you how to identify and remove a load-bearing wall. And we're gonna do it right now. Before I remodeled my living room, you would walk into this house and as soon as you did, you would see this wall staring at you. Ever since I moved in here, I wanted to get rid of that wall. When I did my living room remodel, I finally got the chance. But before I did that, I had to find out what was going on with it to see if it was a load-bearing wall or not. Now, every house is built differently, but they all follow the same principles. You have outside walls on either side that the roof rafters sit on and go up to the peak. And then you have a gable end that goes up. Typically, the house is longer from gable end to gable end than your outside wall to your other outside wall. Typically, joists are run along the shorter span. They sit on the top of one outside wall connected to the roof rafter and run over to the opposite outside wall with a center wall in between that supports the middle of that joist run. Any wall like this that supports a floor or ceiling load is considered a load bearing wall. So in the case of my house, this is the gable end. So the joists run along here. They sit on that outside wall and then go right to this outside wall. And then those joists are supported by a center wall that was down the middle right here. Now I'm in the basement underneath the living room and dining room, and you can see there's a beam right here that supports these joists. And you can picture the floor above was very similar to this. So you have the joists that sit on the sill out here, but you can picture that that is your outside wall. And they go to a center wall right here. And then another joist goes from here all the way to the other outside wall. So if you do have a beam like this in your basement underneath a wall that you're looking to remove, more than likely it is a load bearing wall. Now, if you're lucky enough like me and have an open attic, you'll be able to tell by looking right here. The joists run this way. And like I said, here's the roof rafters. The joists sit over here and run this way and then go all the way over to the other side. And spoiler alert, that was a load bearing wall. And I'll show you exactly how I did that beam later on in the video. Now, if it doesn't look like this in your attic and you actually have trusses, they're gonna look like big triangle pieces basically that make up the ceiling and they also make up the roof. And they'll be held together by a bunch of metal plates or gussets. And if that's the case, it's likely that none of your walls are load bearing except your outside walls. If in your attic you have floorboards like this, you can tell if the floorboards go this way, then your joists are running this way. If you have plywood, you can look at the nails. If the nails are in a straight line this way, you can tell that's where the joist is. If it's the opposite way, then that's where the joist is. So if there's a wall, in this case, running this way, it could be a load-bearing wall. If it's running this way, it's probably not. So this wall back here runs the same way as these joists. And I know that that is not a load-bearing wall, but there are exceptions because now I turned this into a load-bearing wall because that beam sits right here. I could remove this wall up to this point because my post is right here. So that is actually what's holding that beam up. So it can be difficult to tell, of course, if you have a second floor, it can be even harder. But if you are looking to remove a wall, you're gonna open it up anyways. So I suggest cutting a square hole and investigating up there. Now in opening that up, you can find out if it's load bearing and either way, there is a way to take the wall down. It's just a matter of if you want to do the work or if you don't want to do the work. If you were going to take the wall down, if it wasn't load bearing, and now you find out that it is load bearing and it's a lot more work or a lot more money, then you can patch that up and put it off for another day. But there is always a way to take that wall out. As you saw in my basement, the joists, when they land on a wall or a beam, are typically broken, which means they're cut and they kind of overlap each other and they're connected most of the time. 
Now in my living room, these joists were actually run all the way 20 feet and they were two by six. Not only were they two by six, but they were also 24 inches apart. You'll hear the term 16 inches on center. That means from the center of one joist to the next joist is 16 inches apart. And that is standard nowadays with wall studs and joists. And if I was to take that wall out, I'd have all kinds of problems, especially because of the attic storage. So that's another thing you need to take into account. Just because they're run all the way and they're not broken, uh, doesn't mean that they don't need a wall underneath them because two by six is way too small to have a span of 20 feet from one outside wall to the other. So that wall was load bearing. This wall right here is kind of a special case because as I said earlier, a uh, load bearing wall is typically directly above the center beam, which is right about here. So this is in the middle of the run of the joists in the basement. And I think at one point this probably was over here, or at least there was another wall here, and that got taken out. And I think that's because they probably saw that the 2x6 up here ran the entire way and were not broken. So they probably figured that that was fine, which it hasn't collapsed, um, but if this is taken out, this will definitely cause some issues. This is a load-bearing wall at this point because the joists run actually into a beam that's in the bathroom and they run all the way to that outside wall. And now, at some point, this wall was removed or moved over to here. So now that is the load-bearing wall. Now another example of something that could be load-bearing is if, let's say, right above me, there is a bathtub or a hot tub or a wall with a whole bunch of stuff on it, and somebody wanted to add support for that. They might run a wall along the bottom of a joist, or they might run it the other way. So I would recommend, if there is something heavy above that, to not remove it. And you can find out by going to the edge of your house and measuring where that wall is and then going up above that or below it, vice versa, the same way you can find out where the beam is in your house. And that'll tell you if it's supporting something. And by the way, any outside wall is a load bearing wall, if you didn't know that already. And that's why you'll see on the top of windows and doors, if you take the walls apart, you'll see a big header, which is like a big beam that goes above them to support the load on either side of that opening. Now I hope you're not confused or intimidated because now we're going to talk about taking that wall out. And you'd be surprised, it's easier than you think. So the very short explanation of removing a wall and supporting the ceiling or the floor is you need to replace that support. And the way to do that is to put a beam in and then it's going to be supported on one side and then the other. So the first thing you wanna do is figure out the size of your beam. And that is something that an engineer will do. You give them the measurements from one wall to the other, tell them what it's for, if it's gonna support a floor load or if it's gonna support an attic like here, and they will tell you exactly what you need. In my case, it was two LVLs, which are laminated veneer lumber, and they even tell you how to bolt it together or nail it or glue it. They tell you exactly what you need to do in order for that to support the load that you're removing. Once you have that size, you can bring your plans to the building department, which is very important. Make sure you pull the proper permits and all that good stuff. Then you can start your job. When you start the job, the first thing you wanna do is support both sides of that wall because you're gonna be taking that wall out. You wanna support what's there already and you want it close to that wall, but not so close that you can't work. So make sure you give yourself enough room. And I actually used two springboards in the center of the room to attach to the outside wall down to the floor. And it's not 100% necessary, but the reason I did that was because it was the winter time, there was a snow load, and you have your outside wall here and your outside wall here, and the roof goes like this. Now, when I cut those joists in the middle, I didn't want the roof load to push those outside walls out at all. 
So as a precaution, I used those boards to keep the outside walls exactly where they were. Once you have each side of that wall supported, you can go ahead and remove that wall. I was actually able to put my beam in before I took the wall out because it didn't line up exactly where the old wall was. It just depends on your situation, however it works out for you. And I wanted to hide this beam in the ceiling. You can go to the bottom of those joists and call it a day, but I wanted the ceiling to be nice and flush throughout. Now, before you start cutting anything out, you're gonna want to get the posts ready on either side of the beam. And you can use four by four or a metal post. I use double and triple two by fours to create a nice solid structure for the beam to sit on. So on the outside wall, you wanna clean up wherever you're gonna have the beam sitting and put your post in. And then on the other side, wherever you need to support the beam, you can put your post in. And I actually ended up building a wall for it to sit on on the other side, on the inside of the house. Once you're ready to cut those joists down the middle, you can snap a chalk line from one post to the other, measure the thickness of the beam and mark that and cut those joists. Give yourself a little wiggle room, but not too much. And then you can drop your beam in or put your beam up in place. Then you wanna nail your joists into that beam. And before you do anything else, make sure you use joist hangers and attach all of those joists into the beam. So you have that beam in place, all of your mechanical fasteners or your joist hangers are connected. There is one more thing Wherever your beam is supported, it needs to be supported solid to a foundation like this. I had a block in here and that goes right down to the foundation. Now over on the other side where the beam is supported, I also put a block in here and it comes down to this beam, but you also need to support that all the way down to something solid. And what I did was I cut this concrete open and I poured a 12 inch by 12 inch pad underneath this so that all this weight is supported by this nice thick footing. And that right there is really important, especially if you are not supporting underneath a main beam like this. Say you're supporting it right here. This could sag if you ended up going in between the joists, that could definitely sag and you would have an issue. So it needs to be supported all the way down to the foundation. And really that was my least favorite part just because it was so dusty. It wasn't hard, it was just really dusty. So that is how to identify and remove a load bearing wall. And I hope I took away some of the mystery. I'm really hoping I didn't confuse you anymore. Let me know in the comments. I always like to hear from you. I hope this video helps out. And if you wanna see more like it, you can click hereish and hereish and go check those out. If you haven't subscribed yet, definitely consider it. Hit that red button down there if you're interested. Thanks for watching. As always, we'll see you on the next one.